think one of the important things that we did with this guideline was we identified priority areas for further research. Uh, and hopefully that's a list that's useful to, to researchers, but also to funders, because we need investment and we need funding in this space if we're really going to advance the agenda. So we felt that for trials, we needed large, adequately powered trials with hard clinical endpoints and with sufficient duration of follow-up to allow outcomes to happen. Now that's not easy and it's expensive, but that's, that's the evidence that we need if, if we're going to have grade 1A evidence when we do this guideline again. Even in the time that we were writing the guidelines, I've seen lots of positive changes in the post-stroke cognition space. If I think back to even a few years ago, when I was presenting at the ESOC conference, there would be one session on post-stroke cognitive impairment or sometimes maybe one talk. And now at this year's conference, lots and lots of the content is about post-stroke cognition, post-stroke mood, vascular dementia, VCI. So I think the community has really been awoken to the importance of this. Trials are ongoing. There are large international observational cohorts that are going to give us lots of information. And I think we're really in a, a very positive place to see important research get published over the next few years.